there used to be a team called the all airport team. And you never wanted to be on the all airport team because this is how the all airport team is defined. They look really good when they walk through the airport. <laughs> you want them on your team when you're walking through the airport and people are like, ooh, they look like they can really play. And then they step on the court and the truth comes out. You don't want to be on that team. I also have a team called, there's a lot of leaders who are on the all airport team. They looked the part, they dressed the part, they even talked the part until reality and real situations start showing up and you can't find them. That's why Larry Bird used to say all the time, he said, man, it is not impressive. Anyone can score in the first three quarters. It isn't amazing how someone just conveniently is covered in the fourth quarter when it counts. And I say that about leaders all the time. They did like I did on the football field. You conveniently hide. You conveniently hide. And so when we talk about being an authentic leader, we're talking about a leader who leads with your values and doesn't apologize for them. Your value may be, look, hard work. Your value may be, you know, integrity, doing, do, doing what you say you're going to do. Guess what? You hold people to that standard, but you even hold yourself to that standard even higher. There's no way you can hold someone to a standard that you don't hold yourself to. We had a rule in, the football, in football, we just say it all the time, in the locker room, everybody knows the truth. There's no pretending. So we know the truth. So who cares what the coaches say? Who cares what the media says? We know who the real deal is in the locker room and who's not. And it's very important as leaders that we're spending no time posing, being professional posers that I want to look the part. We want to authentically be the part. And when we are the part, it makes a difference. <laughs> Remember I told you earlier how I was dating my daughters and love dating my daughters, take them out on dates, uh, do all that stuff. I had my daughter with me in Las Vegas. I'm keynoting, probably 3,000 people there, a great time. Took her there for her 16th birthday. We went to a few of the shows. It was just a great time, me and her. And I talked about, obviously it was for her birthday, so it was a special event, but I, I talked about how I date my daughters, just like this. She was sitting right on the front row. She was smiling through the whole thing, and it was great. And, you know, it feels good to have those kind of conversations. I love my girls, Taylor and Matt, love them. And after I finished, I asked Taylor, I said, baby, Give me, you know, I always ask, quick question, scale of one to 10, how'd you say I did? She goes, Dad, I, I would say it was great, Dad. It was like, a, a, you know, eight and nine, eight and a half, nine. I was like, one to 10? I mean, <laughs> man, people stood up and clapped. One to 10, she goes, oh, oh no, Dad, it was, I said, no, tell me why it wasn't a 10. She said, well, it, it would have been a, a 10, but you, you were talking about how you love taking me on dates and, you know, every month and everything. I was like, yeah. She goes, Dad, you haven't taken me a date in six months. Whew. I'm still telling stories, talking about my values, but I'm talking about something I haven't been consistently practicing, inconsistency. Now, even if it's unintentional, hypocrisy is frowned upon everywhere. And so making ourselves as leaders vulnerable enough to receive feedback. So being an authentic leader, it's very important. But it's also important to be a vulnerable leader, willing to receive feedback. Many of you in this room, I know, is, are in the business of giving feedback. The next question is, how often do you receive feedback? How well are you really doing? Are you sure? How often do you ask for it? Who are you talking to? How do you know how you're doing? I'm telling you right now, I, I've, I've said this to as many organizations I can possibly say it to, and I say it to you again. I believe the worst run NFL franchise is still ran better than 99% of organizations across the country, even in the world. I feel it. I'm talking about the worst run franchise. I'm talking about the teams that, like the Bengals. I'm talking about, okay, I don't care how they're doing on the field, okay? I'm talking, I'm talking about the Jaguars. I'm talking about teams that are terrible are still ran better than 99% of organizations in America. And people look at me and go, what? what? Where do you get that from? I said, it's simple. It's simple. Not because they're smarter. Believe me, it's not because they got smarter people, okay? It's not because how brilliant and all sharp. No, it's for one simple reason. Transparency. They can't hide. They, we can't hide. Video can 
commandments. How we do during the week is exposed to the world every weekend. And we have a customer base who has very loud voices. They get to say all the time what they really think. And guess what happens every April? What everybody else loves, which is called a draft, we hate who are in the league. Because it's a system designed to find someone who can do your job 80% as much at 20% your salary. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about built-in motivation to keep improving? We don't get to sit there and go, I'm here right now. I don't have to worry about these other guys. Hey, quit working so hard. You're making it bad on us. No. Every year they're looking for people to come replace you. This is the kind of pressures that's all around. Feedback is constant. So for a leader, there has to be qualities or opportunity for feedback to be constant. How are you doing? One person said, I had a leader, I was down in Florida. I had this one boss, he says, Eric, tell my people, let them know what happens when the players aren't doing their job. I say, you want me to tell you what happens? Yeah, tell them. Because my, my team needs to know what it means. To, if you don't do your job, there's going to be accountability. So tell me what happens when the players don't perform well. I said, you sure you want me to tell you? He said, yeah. I said, they fired a coach. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say another word the rest, <laughs> the rest of the session. 